Today we celebrate the Holy Theophany of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ, which means the word Theophany means the appearing of God or the revelation of God. The word Epiphany also means uh, the un the uncovering the uh, the revelation. The and so uh, one of the one of the uh, verses that we keep hearing in the services, some of which are fixed. Um, like in matins, but otherwise, is God is the Lord and has appeared to us. Or in some translations, the Lord is God and has appeared to us. And this, this feast is the feast of Jesus' revelation to us as God. And the, and, the, and the revealing, in a sense, to himself of his true identity. It says when he came to John to be baptized, John knew that this was not just his, not just his cousin that he'd grown up with. John knew that this was not just another guy, another person coming to, uh, to hear his message and to be baptized. Because John could see. And to both Jesus and John, this revelation came as Jesus came from up from the waters and he saw the heavens opened and heard the voice of God, the voice of the Father saying, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And seeing the Spirit come down on him like a dove. And in the early church, there were, there were groups of Christians that uh, particularly emphasized uh, this feast because they thought that this was the time that Jesus was, ad was adopted as the Son of God. But as Orthodox Christians, we, we don't believe that. We believe that Jesus was, was the Son of God from the moment of his conception. And that that, but, the, but that at his baptism, this was revealed to, uh, to him and to John in its fullness, because John also heard that voice of the Father, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Part of this has to do with Christ's divinity, of course. The revelation of, of Jesus Christ as the Son of God. The revelation that God is not simply some solitary monad uh, out there someplace, up in the sky or whatever, but that God is truly present and that he has a son and that he has a spirit. Thus, in this, in this feast, we see the revelation of the Trinity. But it's also a revelation of Christ's kingship because the very identity of the king of Israel, the very being of the king of Israel, was to be the Christ, the, uh, the anointed one, the one who was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and who was God with us, the Emmanuel, for his people. Because, the, because in, in ancient Israel, in the... Uh, at the time of David and Solomon, the king was a sacrament of the presence of God with his people, a sacrament of the pres of uh, not just of God with his people, but of of what of divine of divine of the divine kingship itself, of manifesting God's kingship over the entire creation. And it is this, and it is this that was uh, disrupted. This, that which was broken. It was broken through sin. It was broken through death. And it was broken through the apostasy of the Jews. If you look at Jesus' teaching, he comes and calls the Jews 
to God. And he tells them they don't know who God is. It's pretty radical. It's very radical that they don't know who God is. Because he tells them that if they knew who God was, they would accept Him. Because having seen Him, they see the Father. Because He manifests Jesus in a sense, we could say is the sacrament of the presence of the Father, right? He's the sacrament of the presence of God in the world. And by the encounter with Jesus, we encounter God, right? This, that's, that's the whole point of our understanding. The Jews didn't accept that. They wanted this idea of, of God out there someplace, God not involved in, in, the, um, in the creation. It was more Stoicism than it was um, uh, ancient uh, Hebrew religion. And Jesus is, and John the Baptist are calling them back in repentance. To, be, to have their, their minds transformed, to have their awareness opened. To, he's calling them to enlightenment and to the experience of communion with the God who is. With the God who, who exists in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And who manifests himself and who has revealed himself. Jesus' revelation at, that, at the moment of his baptism, the revelation to Jesus and the revelation that Jesus accomplished to us of his, of his divine nature made man is the revelation of our salvation itself. Because he came to reveal not only God to us, but he came to reveal what humanity is. Because humanity, our humanity, our human nature, is not, was never intended by God to simply rot in the grave. But he comes and he reveals that ultimate potential of, 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 our, of our humanity to be made eternal and to be raised up into the heavens and to be seated in Christ at the right hand of the Father. When Jesus came up from the water, he saw the heavens opened. Now, that's a shorthand. That's a shorthand for uh, not only for the prophetic experience but for that ultimate experience of beholding the throne of God, of beholding God enthroned. You can read all about it in Isaiah, you can read all about it in Ezekiel, you can read all about it in Daniel, you can read about it in Jeremiah, you can read about it in the Old Testament. Jesus was not only a prophet like the great prophets of the Old Testament, Elijah and Elisha and, and, um, and Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, and so forth. And we heard the writings about those, about those holy prophets last night. He is one greater than the prophets. Because when he saw the heavens opened. What did he see? Revelations chapter 5. He saw the throne of God. And he saw himself. Entering into the temple not made with hands. With his own blood. seated at the right hand of the Father. This is the ultimate this is this is the ultimate goal of our salvation. That we in him that our humanity in him 
is seated at the right hand of the Father. Not living according to our biological life, not simply resuscitated, but resurrected and deified and transformed. We're specialists on little boys over here. <laughs> And what an awesome mystery this is, that we in Christ are raised to the throne of the Godhead, and that we enter into Christ, who is our great high priest, who leads us in that eternal worship of the kingdom of heaven, of which our liturgy is a type and an image and a sacrament. He is our great high priest, who is also our king, who is that eternal seed of David who will be, who will be enthroned forever and ever, who leads that, that eternal liturgy of the kingdom of heaven, of which we all are made participants with all the angels and the saints. As he sits with the Father, surrounded by clouds of incense. And what an awesome thing this is, that we in him are able to participate, not only eternally, but here and now because that is exactly the substance of our worship. That we too have died with him in baptism and been raised again. And he raises us up to, the, to, the, to that temple, in that temple made without hands, through this temple made with hands, to that eternal angelic liturgy in which we here and now can celebrate with the angels and the saints, giving thanks to the Father for that great salvation that he has given to us. So let us give thanks to God on this day, on this feast of the Theophany, and uh, let, us, uh, let us always keep in mind this great salvation which he has given to us in his mercy, in his kindness, and as the great gift of his love. Amen.